Uh, thanks for inviting me. I've spent um, hundreds of hours with uh, Kashiwara's back catalog um, and his uh, range is cosmic, it's infinite, I, um, and I admire him a lot. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to mention that I have the same birthday as he does. <laughs> um, <You're 70>. So, <laughs> okay. So in the talk, uh, P will be a prime number, and K will be the uh, algebraic closure of the field with P elements. And the talk is about the following definition. So an F field on a manifold is a locally constant sheaf of rings. fiber is uh, isomorphic to K. <clears throat> so the best example is on a circle. You can uh, put an F field whose fiber at some base point is K. Uh, that I'll call K with an underline. Uh, so his fiber at a base point is K and his monodromy around the circle uh, is the Frobenius. So it carries an element of a fiber to its pth power. And every other good example is, is pulled back from this one. Uh, along a map from N, M to the circle. Let's see, what, when I think of uh, the circle equipped with this sheaf of rings, I'll denote it by S1 with a subscript F sub P. So uh, you might as well define an F field to be a map from uh, a manifold to this reference circle. But if the monodromy is not an integral power of Frobenius, then... Uh, well, then it's not a good example. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if... if, it, if I'd like the, uh, the monodromy around every loop in M to be... Uh, to, to raise to some p to the nth power. All right. Uh, so. This is a sheaf of rings. So we can study sheaves of modules. So I I'll start uh, by discussing locally constant sheaves of modules. So, <coughs> for example, the category of locally constant sheaves of uh, underlined K modules on this a uh, particular circle is equivalent to the category of, of finite dimensional uh, FP vector spaces.
Okay, the equivalence sends a sheaf to its abelian group of global sections, which is a module for the global sections of the uh, sheaf of rings, which is just the field with p elements. So, so well, incidentally, we, we lost a uh, homological dimension by, by passing to this twisted category. This is a semi-simple category. OK, here's another example. So if uh, I take the complement of a knot, and I put an F field on that knot complement whose, uh, let's see, that takes uh, that wraps a meridian of the knot around this, this circle n times. OK, then if I look at uh, one-dimensional local systems, Uh, up to isomorphism. That's a, uh, a finite abelian group. This order is the Alexander polynomial of k evaluated at p to the n. Well, if p is sufficiently large. You have to throw out uh, primes that divide the leading coefficient of the Alexander polynomial. Well, so I, I don't think that that illuminates the Alexander polynomial very much, but uh, it at least indicates that maybe that F, F fields aren't boring. Here's another example. So if M is a surface of genus G, let, let's say genus 3, I want to study rank N local systems on M twisted by some non-zero F field. Uh, well, I can describe it um, as usual as some space of framed local systems decide on some way to frame a local system and then divide by uh, uh, the group that changes that frame. And one way to uh, one way to set up that framing You wind up with uh, five, maybe I need a little more space, five matrices, A1, B2, A1, B1, A2, B2, A3. Uh, and B3 is missing, or rather, B3 is the Frobenius. Uh, so subject to Ds and GLN of K five times, uh, subject to uh, this version of the surface group equation, a1, b1 commutator times a2, b2 commutator is equal to the Lang map. Uh, um, of a2. This is just the, the operation that raises every matrix entry to the pth power. A3 at the end. A3 at the end. Thanks. 
OK, and then when we divide by, by this gauge group, that's just a finite group acting by conjugation. Well, so this is some variant of character varieties that have shown up yesterday and today. Uh, it's, it's not symplectic in any sense. So, so the, the intersection theory on the surface, when, when you have a F field, it is, uh, there's something weirder about it. So that's for a particular choice of F? Huh? For any, basically any F that is not is trivial. It could be a power of p. I mean, it's good. Uh, then it would, right, maybe p to, p to some power in that case. So for a primitive value of f, maybe it's correct as I wrote it. Uh, anyway, it's, it's not a symplectic manifold, even in characteristic p. Um, but it is. Uh, it is a, at least kind of a manifold in characteristic p. So, so, so it um, has a natural structure of a, um, not quite of a scheme, but of a perfect scheme. So any automorphism of anything, it can be repurposed as a local system on a circle. For example, on S1 sub FP. So some examples that are that seem relevant. So if I have a ring, well, if I have a k-algebra, and it's a perfect k-algebra, so that means that. Uh, the p power map on R is a bijection. Then, uh, we can make some variant of this sheaf of rings on, on the circle that I'll call R underlined. OK, that's a sheaf of rings on S1 FP. And just studying this, this functor, uh, th this sets up a moduli problem. And it's, it's represented by a perfect Deline Mumford stack. What it means concretely when you talk about perfect schemes, you have like the, a, the usual collection of regular functions, and then you throw in all their pth roots, uh, which has some, some downsides. Uh, like you, you don't have infinitesimals anymore, and you can't do calculus. But uh, OK, so th this, this thing is a perfect scheme, most, most naturally. Uh, what's another thing you could do? You could replace uh, fp bar with its Frobenius uh, automorphism by uh, the maximal unramified extension of the piadic numbers with its kind of, well, I don't know what it's called. I'll call it sigma. It has a, a field automorphism that lifts this Frobenius map. Um, and OK, so that defines a sheaf of rings 
uh, that I'll call QP infinity underlined. A locally constant sheaf of rings on this reference circle. And uh, the category of local systems for this sheaf of rings is uh, equivalent to, I think, what are called Dudeney isocrystals. So it's again a semi-simple category. This is not an algebraically closed field, so, so uh, you don't get a, you don't just get vector spaces over the fixed field, you get something else, and that something has a name. And uh, okay, the last variant, uh, you could, let's see, if, if I have an algebraic group, over uh, this algebraically closed field K, and it has a r rational structure. OK, that means it also has some uh, isogeny whose fixed points are, are the uh, FP rational points of, of this uh, group, and this isogeny is a bijection on k points. Uh, okay, so you can study this sheaf of groups, this local system of groups on the circle. category of torsors for that sheaf of groups it's naturally identified with the category of torsors for this finite Chevalier group. to uh, apply this, uh, these F fields. I want to use these F fields in symplectic geometry. So if uh, I have a symplectic manifold, and an F field on that symplectic manifold, you can uh, try to define a Fukaya category with care uh, that, that's been changed, twisted maybe by, influenced by uh, this F field. I'd like the objects the objects of this category to be uh, Lagrangian submanifolds of M together with a, a local system of uh, modules for uh, the sheaf of rings restricted to the Lagrangian. Well, so I want to set up 
simple problem. Oh, maybe a sample problem. along those lines and then apply Kashiwara and Shapira's theory to analyze it. So my symplectic manifold will be this reference circle times R3, or in other words, the cotangent bundle of this reference circle times R. And uh, I want to study always sort of non-compact Lagrangians. in this manifold. So I'd like to talk about their boundary conditions. I'll draw in this way. So here's uh, the surface whose um, cotangent bundle is M, this is some surface. Uh, so, so this is the circle down here. It runs from 0 to 2 pi. Maybe it might be better that, to think of this, this circle as having volume log p instead of 2 pi. Uh, I don't know. It doesn't make any difference, but <coughs> uh, okay. So here's here's a uh, cylinder unwrapped and pressed against the blackboard, and then the the, the boundary conditions. Uh, I'll draw two curves, and I'll, I'll two co-oriented curves on this um, uh, annulus. Okay, an orange one and a green one. Uh, so so th these lift they lift to uh, Legendrians, Legendrian curves in uh, kind of the, the boundary of the cotangent bundle of S1 times uh, S1 times R. So that's S1 times R times another S1. And uh, I want to study Lagrangians. Well, OK. So first of all, they should be exact. And second of all, uh, they should, at infinity, at contact infinity, they should wrap around this orange curve exactly once. And uh, th they wrap around the green curve uh, exactly twice. Well, what do I, I mean by that? I mean, uh, uh, this, uh, the embedding from this Lagrangian surface into uh, uh, T star of S1 times R, it, it carries like one, of, one boundary component of the surface. Uh, it extends to a, to a map to the compactification that carries one boundary component around that orange curve one time and the other one around that green curve two times. Is it a 
plays a whole story by, by skeleton foot kind of union of three two half cylinders and some when well, I think of the ship of category uh, uh, instead of thinking about the launch uh, yes although the, um, the fun part is that the, the category that you build this way is, is a target for invariance of Lagrangians um, that, and those those Lagrangians live in a, a real symplectic manifold and not just in some uh, skeleton formalism. But uh, uh, well, yeah, the, uh, yes, you could. Um, so so the, there's this uh, story. It's getting older of Nadler and Zaslow, uh, and they give away. To turn uh, such Lagrangians, well, local systems on, on Lagrangians like that, uh, into sheaves on on that cylinder, and uh, the story works just as well. If you look uh, at local systems of modules over this sheaf of rings, they turn into sheaves uh, of modules over this sheaf of rings on the uh, zero section. Uh, and, and the constructible sheaves that you get, well, the sheaves that you get, they're all constructible. And they have singular support in, in uh, the, the cone over those two uh, curves. In uh, well, in that picture. And what they look like So, so they'll, they'll vanish down here and up here, and uh, there will be some uh, uh, two-dimensional vector space here. Let's call it k squared. It's just a vector space over k. And the monodromy around uh, this uh, loop in the annulus, in this, this region of the annulus, it, it sends uh, the vector a, b to uh, a to the p, b to the p. <coughs> and then in this region, uh, you have a different fiber. You have a one-dimensional fiber. And uh, it's naturally identified with a line in this two-dimensional vector space. So there's a restriction map from this line to here. So it's naturally identified with maybe the, the k span of a vector called x comma y. And then when I uh, uh, move that vector uh, along the local system to the other side, it becomes the line uh, spanned by x to the p comma y to the p. And the um, singular support condition at the crossing, at this, this crossing here, it says that uh, those two lines should be transverse or just not equal to each other. So uh, those make an interesting moduli space. Um, maybe you should talk about exactly how you want to frame that moduli space before I'll describe it. So, so let me uh, first say that there's a Kashiwara and Shapira that give you a, um, a microlocal restriction to the boundary. So uh, how should I put this? L l let me say 
I'm going to consider the, the space of all constructible sheaves that look like this. Let me call that space fancy M. So it's just, just the set of constructible sheaves, I guess, of this form. And one of the things that you get from, from uh, the theory of the microlocal theory of sheaves is, is a restriction map from M to, uh, in this case, well, uh, there, there are two components of the so-called, well, of the boundary of this figure. One of them uh, uh, is, is uh, this circle. And uh, the condition, I guess now erased, that, that the Lagrangian should wrap around that circle exactly once, says that this will be a local system uh, a one-dimensional local system on that, that circle, and then a two-dimensional local system on the other circle. So th those two circles, they have slightly different nature. Uh, one of them just is a copy, it projects homeomorphically onto this uh, standard reference circle. The other one uh, is a double cover of that standard reference circle, and it's natural to call it S1 FP squared. It has the same relationship to the field FP, uh, to the field FP squared that S1 FP had to the field FP. So, so I want to describe some version of this moduli space where these two maps are framed. So I just ha I have my Lagrangian. I, I could do that by starting with a Lagrangian that had a framing along each boundary component. Um, uh, and uh, so, so the result, I'll just tell you what the result is. The result is, is naturally identified with uh, okay, basically there's just that one parameter x comma y. So the set of pairs x y in k squared uh, such that x y to the p minus x to the p y is equal to uh, x to the p y to the p squared minus x to the p squared y to the p. Uh, maybe maybe there's an, another sign in there. So that's uh, a famous variety. That's the famous. Should be plus zero. Uh, they they uh, sorry. It's it's they also obey. X y is not equal to x to the p y to the p. So not just non-zero, but um, right. This is a famous Drinfeld curve. Or actually, something with several connected components. One of which is the Drinfeld curve. And that's um, uh, the first example, historically first example, of uh, what are called delene lustig varieties. So I'd like to talk about delene lustig varieties next. Um, so and I'd like to talk about it in language a little bit similar to this. So fix uh, uh, a group and a rational structure on that group, so an algebraic group over uh, FP. So that'll be the, the uh, isogeny on the, the algebraic closure. Uh, so it induces like I discussed, a, a, a sheaf of a, lo a local system of groups on, um, on an annulus. It'll be helpful to me to think of this annulus as having a boundary. So let me just write it as uh, S1 times the extended real line. Um, it also induces
that's in fact almost equivalent to the data of a uh, uh, Dinkin diagram automorphism. I know. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, this one. <coughs> and then um, uh, fix, it's just an example, then fix a sequence of simple reflections for the vial group, or just a, a sequence of, of simple roots for the Stinkum diagram. Call that capital I. So I is just uh, two, three, two, four, something like that. Then I want to define uh, a space called the Lillian Lustig variety, or just called X of I. So it's the, the variety that parameterizes well s some structure on this this annulus so 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 here's uh, this 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 annulus and uh, uh, I'll use the sequence two three four two three two four to, to mark some points on the boundary at the top two, three, two, four. <coughs> so parameterize, and, and this is an annulus that carries a, um, uh, a, sheaf, of abelian, a sheaf of groups uh, whose fiber is some reductive group over the algebraically closed field K. And uh, I, I want to parameterize um, a, a G of K torsor together with uh, a family of B reductions, re reductions to the Borel subgroup of G along the boundary, and not along the whole boundary, but, but along the spaces in between uh, those uh, <coughs> uh, those marked points on the boundary. And then subject to the condition that uh, the Borel here and the Borel here are in the relative position indexed by this simple root. Uh, relative position conditions. Uh, given by the sequence i. So these are the delene lustig varieties. What, uh, when you set it up right, x of i is a, uh, a variety uh, over k. And it, it depends only on the element of the veil group corresponding to. Ah, uh, sorry. I, I should. These are a little bit um, more general because. Uh, th there's no reason that these. Uh, so, the, uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, what is it? Uh, yeah, there's no reason that, that that's a reduced word. But but the braid group. We can ask him the braid group. It's a positive element of the braid group. It's a positive element of the braid group, and uh, uh, yes, it depends. Uh, th that part. There's one something that's pretty easy, which is I think it's easy, that it depends only on on that, that element of the braid group, and slightly harder, well much harder, is the fact that it depends only on the conjugacy class of the braid, uh, some twisted conjugacy class, um, which is what I will talk about in a minute. Uh, so that you have this variety over k. And it has a the, the right framed version of it. it. It has an action 
so the framed version, it has an action of uh, this finite group and a commuting action of, of some torus that depends on, on i, uh, some uh, finite subgroup of a torus that depends on, on capital I. Uh, and that brings me to So, so the, the non-commutative group is just, just changing the, the frame of the torus, and somehow that torus is, is changing the B, reduc B reductions. Um, yes, so, so, so what are delinguistic varieties for? So their cohomology, their elatic cohomology, uh, it has an action of uh, this finite Chevalier group, which is very interesting, and this finite commutative group, which is easy to understand. Uh, so it's a bimodule. for uh, these two groups. So it gives a, a, a map called the Lean-Lustig induction. Uh, depending on the sequence i, from uh, the representation theory of this finite group, finite commutative group, to the representation theory of this non-commutative group. Uh, So, uh, everything that we know about the representation theory of finite groups like this is some consequence of, of uh, knowing something about these varieties. And uh, I guess one of their important properties, their first important property, is called disjointness. So if I, if I have a character of this uh, uh, torus, this finite subgroup of a torus, and I delene lustig induce it up to a character of uh, uh, the Chevalier group, and then I do it again with a different delene lustig variety, uh, and I want to compute their um, dot product. Their dot product is zero unless uh, i and j map to the same element, same uh, Frobenius twisted conjugacy class of the vial group. Oh, uh, that's true if i and j are reduced words. And I, I come to think of it, I don't know what's true for very general braids. Um, Uh, so if, you, if you're looking at uh, in the Grotenic group, it depends only on the image in the vial. In the vi I'm only on the image in the vial group, not in the braid group. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, right, if, um, well, if these are, the, the only chance they have to be the same, to, to have a non zero dot product, is if. Uh, uh, I and J are, are the same conjugacy class. Um, and then once they're in the same conjugacy class, then, then maybe it's more difficult. Uh, but uh, so th this is a theorem of Galen and Lustig. And uh, how do they prove it? Um, well, uh, P pairing um, those two characters should involve pairing these two bimodules. So you should study uh, the variety 
uh, x of i times x of j, and then divide by a single copy of the finite non-commutative group. So I'm, I'm going to call this a pairing variety. So, so it has, continues to have these actions of uh, commutative groups. But um, anyway, you, you need to, 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 to prove this, this um, disjointness property. You need to study this variety. And uh, what, what's useful to know about it is that it has a stratification. by uh, algebraic tori. So uh, there's, there's some way to decompose it in, into algebraic tori. And then what, what contributes to this inner product are the, the zero-dimensional tori. So it's, it's helpful to know whether or not there are any zero-dimensional tori. So uh, all that I really want to say is that you can see these tori in this, well, in symplectic geometry, in, at least for type A, and uh, in this sort of formal surface description, surface topology in general. So I'll say something about that. So here's the simplest example. Uh, so if, if G is SL2 and both I and J are just the same, the only node of the Dinkin diagram, um, then uh, the pairing variety, well, it uh, parameterizes uh, data, is it still up there? Data like that, but now with, uh, with, uh, with i going across the top and j going across the bottom of that annulus. Here's I up here, and here's J down here. And that's it. Uh, so you have some B reductions on the boundary in between these marked points. And um, the, uh, so, so, so in this case, what does that look like? Um, so we have a, a SL2, we have basically a two-dimensional vector space over this annulus. And then up here at the top, uh, we have a, a line of that two-dimensional vector space. Might as well be some point in the projective line. Let's call it Z. And then uh, th this one is, is uh, uh, I, I, can, I can get whatever is labeling this other side of that marked point by continuing this line uh, this, this is an annulus, remember, um, uh, around to the other side of the annulus. And then when it crosses the boundary of this annulus, it gets raised to the power of p. And down here, something similar happens. And then uh, the, the uh, condition at this node is that z and z to the p are different. So it's, uh, uh, it's a set of pairs, z comma w such that z is different from z to the p, and w is different from w to the p. So that's some subset of the affine plane. And then I divide that by the action of the finite group SL2FP. So it's some algebraic surface. And uh, <coughs> uh, 
uh, how can you see a lot of tori in it? Um, this is this spectral network story, or maybe it's a special case of that story uh, that I heard are called BPS graphs. Uh, so draw, but basically you draw a graph on the annulus. So did you divide by the tori already? Or by the finite thing? Oh, uh, I forget. Because it, here you have a, yeah. It won't, I guess I, ha I, guess I have. Um, it won't, well, that, what, it, it, I don't understand exactly what it changes there, but it, it doesn't change the fact that the thing is covered by algebraic tori. Um, covered is a little bit too strong, but uh, yeah, I want to draw a graph in the annulus. Um, well, I want to emphasize that I could draw a really complicated one, so I could draw like this one. Um, uh, I don't know if I'd uh, be able to work that out uh, on the blackboard in real time. So I could, I could also draw a simpler one like uh, this one. Uh, so this graph, maybe I'll draw it in color. And now, um, these, these labels on the boundary, well, once I've drawn this graph uh, on the surface, they extend into the interior of the graph. Uh, so they give labels for each, each chamber, uh, each face of this graph. Um, and I, I want to consider an open subset <coughs> of um, uh, an open subset depending on that graph of this, this pairing variety. <coughs> um, cut out by open conditions. So it's just the set of z comma w that obey the, the usual conditions that z is not equal to z to the p and w is not equal to w to the p. But then also for each uh, edge of this graph, if, if two uh, if, if two numbers are labeling faces that are that meet at an edge, um, then they should also be different. So, so here, you should have z different from w to the p, and then also here, you should have z different from w. So this is some open subset of this this surface, and. Uh, I claim that it's an algebraic torus. And in kind of a natural way, uh, up to powers of p. So, so the map to Uh, this torus, so the, the two coordinate maps, they're, they're cross ratios. So, so uh, uh, I send z comma w, sorry, there's one cross ratio for every compact edge in this picture. So there's, there's a cross ratio for this blue edge, and there's a cross ratio for this red edge. So, uh, oh, maybe this one. So, so the, the blue one uh, takes z comma w to the cross ratio of the four numbers that are surrounding that edge, taken, say, in, in clockwise order. Uh, so the cross ratio of uh, z, w, w to the p, z to the p. And the other one uh, takes you to, maybe I have to draw, uh, 
to continue this story. I have to draw another fundamental domain for the annulus to uh, get this right. Okay, so here's still Z. Uh, here's this red edge. And then this is Z to the 1 over P. Uh, and that's the only, okay, that's the only new guy. So this red, the, the, the four numbers surrounding that red edge are uh, uh, Z, Z to the 1 over P. Uh, w and W to the P. So take the, the cross ratio of those. Well, th this. Uh, so, so th there are there are a lot of tori like this inside of. Um, uh, this surface, each one indexed by, by a graph that looks like that. And there's some kind of, uh, when you can obtain one graph from another by mutation, there's some kind of uh, uh, transformation, which is a little bit different than the usual cluster story because the thing is not uh, Kalabiao in any sense, I don't think. But, um, uh, I've, I've run out of steam and pages. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I'll stop. <coughs> Some questions and remarks? No. Uh, so, so you get, uh, you seem to suggest that you can rotate the points uh, by closing the uh, closing your line or rotating and yeah. then you get a, a, a conjugacy environment? Yeah, for Frobenius twisted conjugacy. Or, or, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the bread relations, or you think it's uh, uh, not so easy? Or braid relations are easy, but, but um, uh, but things that are just there should be more to it than that. Uh, because when you, sorry, when you continue something around, it might not be a reduced word anymore. So, so, so now, now there's some... Uh, uh, well, it changes the dimension of the delin lustig variety, but it doesn't matter for the character. Does the dimension depends only on the, on the scalinality of time? Yeah. Right, but if, so if you have two, if it's not a reduced word, and you want to, ah, that's, maybe that's what I'm saying, to cancel... You, you don't want to cancel them. Okay. I mean, if you cancel them, you're going to have some... Uh, Actually, uh, I have some questions. So, so this story, uh, like cluster tori, yeah, only, yeah, it's a big tori. But in this theorem, we can decompose in very small tori, which, which is not totally obvious in cluster geometry, the whole story. It's, yeah. Uh, it's not really. That's true. Um, th there is, um, in, in type A, uh, there's the, this, the, story of, th 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 these are equivalent to moduli of sheaves on a yeah. Legendrian knot, and th there's the story of ruling stratifications, this Henry Rutherford story, which is, is sort of, w which gives you these, these closed, these um, positive co-dimension tori. So um, I don't know how they fit in with the cluster story, it's true. Okay, and just one small remark in general for this idea of shifts of categories, one can put any local system of local fields on symplectic manifolds, and then again will be um, Foucault categories. But yeah, that seems to be. I, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, I agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you started from the FP, but if you start from the, uh, the characteristic zero field with a notarism, then what happens? Yeah, I, I, what? Yeah, for example, t t take the previous yeah. polynomials and uh, t to that t to something. Yeah, um, uh, one. It's a little bit of a miracle that yes, uh, th this is defined using some field automorphism 
but it's linear or it's geometric over the not over the fixed field but over the it's 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 it you get some variety over fp bar even though you've invoked this this uh, field automorphism of fp bar and that's something really special to Frobenius More questions? Okay. Just, I mean, can you really uh, answer smooth compactification easily in the subject here or, or, or not? Right? I, don't, I don't know. I mean, just, I mean, if you take, for SL2, for example, if you take uh, uh, just I with one element, <laughs> I mean, can you add the missing you, points? Uh, you don't impose that transversality yeah. condition there? You have to impose some conditions. Yeah, I guess. You have to impose some conditions still. There you impose none, but in general, you don't. Know. Yeah, I haven't thought about it, but I. Yeah. Okay, if not, then thank the speaker again.